Hi everyone, a good afternoon, and welcome to the Nürburgring, where the sun is shining for race 10 of the Porsche Carrera Cup Deutschland here on uh, track. Very much looking forward to what is the uh, slightly longer race for the uh, uh, Porsche uh, Carrera Cup. They have two races across the weekend. First race is uh, 25 minutes to this race, uh, just a wee bit longer. So looking forward to uh, this race immensely. And of course, uh, the first time that the uh, Porsche Carrera Cup drivers of uh, this weekend had some uh, dry running because uh, the weather conditions absolutely uh, torrid yesterday. Today, it's jolly cold, if I may be honest with you, but at least it is dry. So as we reflect on the weather yesterday, the start of uh, Saturday's uh, race then, it was Christopher Zotzling who uh, was in uh, pole position and would defend his uh, pole position to the first corner. Nick Yellowly was uh, right behind him. Mikhail Amamula with a very good start, improving from uh, P6 to end up P3 after the uh, first series of corners on board with Gabriella Piana in these uh, truly terribly wet conditions. And on board of uh, Christopher Zochling ahead of uh, Nick Yellowly. Yellowly would overtake Zochling though for P1. Incidentally, uh, what we didn't realise at the time was the windscreen wiper of Zochling not working, so it's hard for him to see the braking points, etc. He would end up taking uh, P6 in the race. The German actor Richie Muller was performing well, starting from the end of the field, ended up uh, P22 and was not lapped, which uh, was a very good achievement indeed for the uh, amateur driver out here once again on track. Championship leader Dennis Olsen uh, overtaking uh, Mikhail Ammermuller, uh, as we will see here, and this would be for uh, uh, P2. And uh, Dennis Olsen then getting past uh, Mikhail Ammermuller, as you can see, and it was a really brave move all the way around the outside, but uh, did it. Amamula tried to come back, but uh, Olsen was uh, firm, but it was going to be Nick Yellowly that would score his second win of the season at round nine of the Carrera Cup Deutschland. And uh, then it was uh, Yellowly, Amamula, uh, Christian Engelhart, the way it looked uh, right at the end. And a good win for uh, Nick Yellowly. So... Uh, Olsen on the uh, podium and Amamula as well. So the cars are there on the grid for uh, race number two. 35 minutes this race then, rather than the uh, 25 minutes as once again we look at uh, Christopher Zochling and how much of a burden would that have been? Former Porsche Carrera Cup racer Alex Torrell alongside me in those conditions not to have a wiper working. Blooming difficult I would have suggested. Ah, it's it's not easy. You need a you need a good visibility to see to see the the, the race track. And yesterday was raining a lot, so of course, not working wiper. But it's also not the end of the world. I mean, it, it, it's it's worse than kind of really should not should not work in the in the car if, if they don't work. It's yeah, uh, sure. it's worse for the driver. So, nevertheless, um, we saw really good pace from from Nick Jelloli, the cars. Uh, we say happy birthday, Helmut. So we say happy birthday to Helmut Absolutely. from here. Absolutely, I think we should, shouldn't we? And Nick will pay us for that later. <laughs> Thumbs up from Nick. Um, he uh, did a very, very good job yesterday, didn't he? And it's really interesting, because if you watch Nick Yellowly's time in the Carrera Cup, this is second season in the Carrera Cup. Yeah, a supremely experienced driver is Nick Yellowly. Very, very quick driver. It takes a while to get to grips with these cars, doesn't it? And yeah. one, of, one of those that has done so, hugely experienced in these cars, is Christian Engelhardt. Yeah, you're totally right. The Porsche Carrera Cup car, it's, a, it's not an easy car. It's a car with needs a lot of uh, driving skills. You need to be really technical on your, on, your, on your movement, on your overtaking position, and also on your braking, on your cornering speed, how you uh, behave with the weight, uh, weight transfer. You also see Dennis also on his not first year of experience or second year already and he's now getting into the into the pace of the car he's coming faster and faster leading the championship at the moment yes. also running on porsche super cup yeah and and that's valuable isn't it because you get so much running and of course you know being engineered by uh, the conrad motorsport team as dennis olsen is uh, of course uh, franz conrad with so much uh, experience in uh, Porsche racing, as we look at uh, Zaid Ashkenani, who is going from uh, uh, P5 on the grid. Olsen, uh, 
and I never realised that as a Porsche Junior, if you're elevated into that Porsche Junior program as um, Dennis Olsen was, you actually choose which team you go with. It's not nominated. No, no, it's not nominated. You can choose the team you want to go, because Porsche, Porsche relies really a lot in all, all the teams are really supreme teams. You have a lot of experience, yeah, absolutely. many, many years in the competition. So. And that, that, that's why we also see the, how close is this championship because the difference between the cars, the difference between the teams is not much. But as you said, uh, the driver can choose uh, freely the, the teams he wanna he wanna join for for the season. So we saw now one minute board. That means everyone out of the grid. Cars will start running their engines. Yeah. Um, we will clear to go to, to, to start that formation lap, one formation lap for Carrera Cup, car will come back to the grid, stand in the actual positions, life will go on, off, and race will start as usual. So Audi Sport uh, TT Cup then, we're uh, 30 seconds away from the cars being released on their formation lap. 30 seconds now. And a great sign that is as the uh, Lots of spectators here to enjoy the uh, Carrera Cup race action that is about to unfold over the next uh, 35 minutes of this race. As I mentioned, it's the uh, longer duration of the uh, races over the two across the weekend. And it's not much respite for the drivers because straight from here, um, Alex, of course, head off as we do to the uh, Saxon ring for the next round. Yeah, next weekend we will be again together in the commentary booth. Oh goodness, I cannot wait. <laughs> <laughs> so the cars then off on their uh, formation lap now. And uh, winding their way around this uh, 3.629 uh, kilometer circuit here. It's the sprint variant, if you like, of the uh, uh, Nürburgring, which uh, features some 11 turns, seven of them are right-handers, four of them are left-handers. And uh, that is a great shot, isn't it, of uh, uh, the cars wending their way uh, downhill. It's a really, really nice sound of, the, of this Porsche Cup with an open exhaust. We see now the grid. For this 10th race of the season, Zucklin, Jelloli, Engelhardt in the third, three first position, Dennis Olsen, Ashkanani, Marius Naken, Amma Müller, Gabriele Piana, Larry Tenfoden, and Alpha Sayal Zubar in the top 10. Then David Kogman, P11, P12, Ryan Cullen, P13, Tony Wolf, Wolfgang Thrille, first of the amateur drivers on P14. Then we have Carlos Rivas, Jörn Schmidt, Stade, P16, 70, Henry Scoot, Thomas Prynin, Wolf Nathan. And then P21, we have Philip Sagar, Peter Schoeffen, P22, Evan Taylor. Pierre Yves Pack, P24, and in the last position of the grid, our German actor, Richie Müller. I forgot to mention um, earlier on that there are two uh, classes in the uh, Carrera Cup. As uh, you've said, there's the A category, which is for uh, pro and semi-pro drivers. Then there is the uh, uh, B category for the uh, amateur, amateur and gentleman drivers. I think it's fair to say in leading that championship is uh, Wolfgang Thriller always wearing his uh, sunglasses is uh, Wolfgang. Other notables in that, of course, uh, Wolf Natan, uh, Netherlands-based driver. And uh, Carrera Cup cars have been here at the Nürburgring already once this year because they took part in the uh, Porsche Sports, uh, Sports Club uh, racing that was here um, earlier in the year. But they use the GP version of the uh, Nürburgring circuit rather than the uh, sprint version that they are on for this weekend's uh, event. So cars uh, make their way into the um, into their uh, grid boxes. Twelve point four the air temperature. I said it was cold, didn't I? Fifteen point eight the uh, track temperature. All silence then as we await the green flag from the marshal at the rear once the final car goes into the um, into the uh, grid box and once we have that the start sequence can get underway there is that uh, green flag that uh, i mentioned engine note rises so too does the excitement 
So and off we go. Really good start from Nick Jelloli from P2. We got a got really good launch. Right after him, Christian Engler. Oh, Christian Engler breaks really late and gives a little bit more than a loft tap to uh, to Nick Jelloli. Let's see if he doesn't have any damage in the front. Then Gabriele Piana also in the back, fighting with Larry Ten Fodder. We see also Dennis Olsen getting past Christopher Soltlin so into Dennis. the inside line in corner number three. So Dennis Olsen up to uh, P2. And Nick Yellowly trying to uh, escape Christian Engelhardt uh, all over the back of uh, Christopher Soltling. And then the uh, rest of the pack make their way through the uh, little shortcut section that links the, uh, or makes up the uh, sprint circuit if you like. Oh, Ash Kanani also with some yes. damage. I think he had a, he had a small tap uh, with uh, Gabriele Piana on the start, as well in corner one. You see also the damage car from Christian Enhar in the front bonnet. David Coltman getting past Ash Kanani, and uh, now there you can see John Chichmada and uh, Tony Wolf together, but uh, Nick Yellowly up the road now ahead of uh, Dennis Olsen. Dennis Olsen, and uh, there goes Christopher Sochling. They're f flying through that uh, 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 NGK chicane. Christian Engelhart was uh, very close so around that uh, Coca-Cola turn as uh, Carlos Rivera from the uh, Black Falcon team. Here is Nick Yellowly, Olsen, Zosling, Engelhart. Then it's uh, Marius Nack and Mikhail Amamula. Uh, Larry Tenvorder is uh, up to uh, P7 in the uh, second of the uh, Project One all yellow machines that you can see there. So, uh, Christian Engelhart then, with uh, years of experience in uh, the uh, Carrera Cup in the uh, number five car there that you can see, engineered by that uh, Black Falcon team. And Christian Engelhart has, I should think, over the years, very nearly driven for every team that uh, takes part in uh, Carrera Cup. I think so, pretty much, yes. He's a driver that's uh, very much in demand and an extremely safe pair of hands within which to trust your... Uh, see, now again, you see how late Christian oh. have and pushed quite hard into the Nick Jelloli car, forcing us, him as well to have a small lock-up. We also Piana on the back, Let's see it again. on the inside of uh, an inside door of Amelula. You, you can actually see Nick Jelloli yeah. re reacting on the steering wheel there. You see Piana clipping a little bit the inside door of Mikkel Amamula, but nothing major happened. Now presumably uh, a vulnerable a vulnerable point on the uh, front of these cars is of course that's where the radiators are yeah but as the way christian enhar clipped uh clipped nick jelly was frontal completely frontal this is not a big problem the big problem on this car is when you clip corners. a little bit yeah, yeah the corners where are the radiators the coolant and this this might cause you a problem if you hit a car completely straight behind should not be much of a problem well looks almost damage free at the back of Nick Yellowly's car so it certainly not caused any damage to his car and the way it's performing uh, you would suggest that's the case as well uh, Zayed Ashkanani you said there was some damage to that car you called that absolutely right for the MRS GT racing team Ashkanani comes into the uh, pit lane uh, yeah, yeah probably some that. small liquid this this is common to see when you have the front damage like he has and these uh, lock-ins usually your radiator it's maybe a little bit broken so it's liquid so these small drops of water is coming into your tire right and, and you are losing the grip in the front we see ryan Cullen fighting with david Kolkman for p10 at the moment so uh Kolkman in the number 16 car ryan Cullen in the uh, number 26 machine i've had the privilege of having ryan Cullen alongside us in commentary in the days before the uh, package that we were able to put together for Alex Toriel was uh, sufficient for his agent to agree for to him to be alongside us. Now, Ryan Cullen, of course, was alongside us when, regrettably, he couldn't take part in a uh, race two following damage in race one at Hockenheim. Oh, my goodness me! And that was a, an innovative uh, way of taking that chicane from Ryan Cullen as he sideways and very nearly bounced off the car of uh, David Colkman. That's not the quickest way, is it? No, definitely it's not the optimum way. Yesterday I was talking in the paddock this morning with the drivers of the Carrera Cup and there were some discussions because of the track limits in the chicane. Yes. They were not really clear where, where could you, because some drivers were cutting the chicane way too much, gaining an advantage without penalty. Some other was driving the normal line and losing time. 
So we will see how, how it's uh, race direction controlling this today. As far as I got to know, if we get another shot of the chicane, you have the... Oh, and we have Rivas. Oh, going in that Astro there, which is still damp. It's full of water, full that of water, road, isn't it? Losing the rear of the car. And spinning. Coming just ahead of... Uh, when we see now Philip Saga coming into the box. And what's wrong with the uh, Philip like Saga car? Tire failure in the front right. Yeah, we have a tire failure on the front right. Looks like a big lockup. So we go back to the front pack of the race. Nick Jelloli leading just few meters or even centimeters in yeah. front of uh, Dennis Olson, which is right at his back of this car few seconds behind, 1.5 seconds behind is Christopher Sokli now, which is uh, lapping really fast as well. Christian Ennenhaar on P4, two seconds behind uh, Christopher Sokli. And we see now Dennis Olsen squeezing his car left, right, showing his, uh, his intention to go through to Nick Jelloli. He tries now to dive into the inside of corner number three. But it's not there yet. Getting as tight as possible. Olsen really is pressuring Nick Yellerly now. This for the race lead. Uh, Christopher Zosling is uh, P3. So Nick Yellerly having to defend very, very hard from uh, Dennis Olsen. Two fighters in the uh, championship as well, of course. So Nick Yellerly and Dennis Olsen. Dennis Olsen leading that championship. Nick Yellerly chasing for all he is worth in terms of championship points. And at the moment, the roles are reversed in this race, aren't they? Because Nick Yellerly is leading it and Dennis Olsen is uh, P2. But uh, you kind of get the impression here that Nick Yellerly has not been able to break away. He's not been able to build a gap over Dennis Olsen. So as they head towards the chicane, I don't think Olsen is quick enough now, but what he might do off the exit of the chicane is set up and overtake perhaps for turn number one. Yeah, this, this fight might also allow the Christopher Chocolin to get close close to the top two and then we might have a, an open fight for the three first position of the of the podium, of the race. Three-way fight, potentially. Here comes Olsen to the outside. Nick Yellowly protecting the inside line, runs wide now. Olsen will try and outbreak him and go to the inside, but Yellowly just makes the car wide enough to, present, to prevent Olsen from be being able to do that. He was oh so close, wasn't he? Uh, Nick Yellily, very, very experienced. He knows where to place the car to deny uh, Dennis Olsen, but now Olsen again just trying to put his nose alongside the uh, Nick Yellily car, but prevented from doing so. Alex, you're absolutely right. Christopher Zosling is trying to buy into this battle as well now so that we do get a three-way fight for the lead. And the more these two are fighting, of course, the uh, more that is enabling Christopher Zochling to get on terms, isn't it? Yeah, Christopher, Christopher Zochling is already there. So, yes, uh, so we have now that this three-way... Oh, when we see Nick Jelloli clipping a little bit, this Astro Tev on the entry of corner six and losing a little bit the rear. Like you said, everything which is outside of those white lines, every, every piece of Astro Tev is still damp. So you should definitely not run into there. When we see now Christopher Zirkling putting some pressure into Dennis Olsen, getting really close. So, He's Dennis Olsen tried to dive in the inside for the chicane. He's there. Oh, side by side. Zirkling gets... Zirkling is going to be the big winner here because he's got the exit out of the uh, t chicane. And he goes through on the inside. You were absolutely right. It allowed him to come in to back into this battle. And now he leads the race. Yellowly is on the outside of Dennis Olsen, but crosses to the inside line now. Look how close these three cars are going into turn number one. Yellowly to the outside. Zosling is locking up and he carries much too much speed. And now Olsen leads this race. Here comes Yellowly having a go at him once again, though. Wow, what a few meters that was, Alex Torrell. Yeah, it's still not finished yet. Nick generally will keep also the pressure on Dennis Olsen. So getting now a little bit tighter at the exit of corner number three, so you might have a better exit at corner number four. There we see he's going right. Maybe on the staying on the outside line for the break into corner number five, that shortcut into the sprint version of Nürburgring. So Christopher Zögli managed to keep his position from Christian Engelhar but lost the, the gap between the first two 
drivers, then it's also the Nick Jelloli. So now it's the time for Nick Jelloli to put pressure into the Norwegian driver. When we see again the replay, then it's also dives in the inside for the chicane. Nick Jelloli makes the door as the, and the, the, the position as close as possible. This allows Christopher Schocklin to have a really good exit and accelerate, get the position from Dennis Olsen and also from Nick Jelloli into the break for Coca-Cola corner. We see now again the replay. Nick Jelloli making that gap as tight as possible. <coughs> Dennis Olsen all over the curb, going into his door. Nick Jelloli runs out of space, so had to cut the chicane. And Christopher Schocklin, and there we see Blake Christopher Schocklin, Blakey having a really big, 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 big lock oh, up in the inside huge, of the, of the corner. Losing a lot of time, avoiding the gravel. And then we had a Christian Christian Engelhardt coming just behind. Look at Franz, Franz Conrad. Conrad. <laughs> oh, heavens. That was a really, really exciting uh, fight. It was, but was it not just a little error from Sochling to carry so much speed into turn one? It was inevitable he was going to lock, wasn't it? Yeah, he was he was, he was breaking way too, way too late. And of course, these cars has no ABS, no, no uh, brake, brake assistance. So it's all down to the driver. So I said he was breaking really late, and this this made him overshoot the corner. But he's already back in the yeah. in the tail of uh, Nick Jelloli. So it's nothing finished yet. Olsen though has managed to put seven tenths on uh, Nick Jelloli now that he's got his nose in front. Olsen is uh, clearly just a little bit quicker, isn't he, than uh, uh, Nick Jelloli? Uh, Christian Engelhart with the uh, damage to the front of his car. Then, as you can see, he's running in uh, P4. The damage not too. Uh, bad though, because as Alex made the point, because he hit the Nick Yellowly car square on, it means it won't have damaged the uh, cooling radiators. Larry Tenvorder jumps all over the uh, curbs. Larry Tenvorder is uh, running in P7. And there is uh, Michael Amamula getting past Marius Nacken. Marius Nacken, yes, in uh, car number 14. So Olsen now extending by another three tenths his lead over Nick Yellowly. Uh, to a full second, then it's Zochling Engelhardt, then it's uh, Amamula, Marius Nack, and Larry Tenvorder and Gabrielli Piana is uh, running in uh, P8, ahead of uh, David Colkman and Ryan Cullen rounding out the top 10. See now the replay of Larry Tenvorder cutting all the way in the chicane, flying all four wheels all on the All four wheels, yeah. That was good, I enjoyed that. More of the same, please, uh, Larry. This is Ryan Cullen and Thomas Prining. And Thomas Prining shortcutting the chicane as well. Now, that will be interesting to see because they were side by side going into the chicane and Prining surely gained an advantage there, didn't he? Yeah, exactly. This is a bit the point here and the situation we also saw yesterday that if you are on the outside of the wrong part of the, someone is going to the inside of the chicane and, and gaining your position or overtaking you in the first left-hander. But if you keep the outside line and then you cut the second part of the chicane, you're actually gaining an advantage because you're keeping your position. Mm. So we will see what the race direction has to do about it. When we see Dennis also managed to open the gap compared to Nick Jelloli. Oh, look at this. Oh, on the grass was uh, Thomas Prining as Ryan Cullen is uh, fighting back. And uh, also coming into that battle now, of course, is uh, Tony Wolf in uh, the Huber Racing by Trispar car. So there is uh, Ryan Cullen in uh, the number 26 machine. Here's a replay of the start. A really bit slow start from Christopher Soklin. Soklin. Engelhardt with a good one, wasn't it? The Engelhardt with a good, the good start, and we see now the break, a little bit oh, optimistic. I mean, that was... Mm, from someone as experienced as Christian. See, from the back of the grid. What a lock-up they had. Huh? Mm. See it yeah. again from this angle. Boom. He's locked. You know, in fairness, he is trying to break, but cold tires, aren't they? Yeah, it's cold tires. It's late. We also saw the same place bef uh, before when Christopher Sochlin uh, overshoot the corner, so it might be still not as grippy as the outside part. Okay. So that might be also causing some issues. And we saw Thomas Prining running out on the Astro turf. And now Dennis Olsen putting his timer down and opening a gap to 1.4 seconds. 
compared to Nick Yellowly. And Christian Amma Muller putting now into pressure Christian Engelhar. Yes, Michael Amma Muller really Michael is. Michael excuse me. He's on uh, Christian Engelhardt now, isn't he? So Michael Amma Muller, another one of those hugely experienced racers in the uh, Carrera Cup. Uh, former single seater star, of course, Michael Amma Muller. Uh, now, right behind uh, Christian Engelhardt, maybe we'll have a go going into turn number one. It's the fight over P4 at the moment between uh, Christian Engelhardt and Mikhail Amamula. They've been on the podium together a number of times, so he'll try and get underneath the Christian Engelhardt car now, but Engelhardt knows exactly where to put the car to try and prevent Amamula from uh, taking advantage, and thus far has been able to do so. But uh, Mikhail Amamula, for sure, is just a little bit quicker than Christian Engelhardt, but he's got to find a way past. Olsen, in the meantime, is extending his margin at the front. There he is, our race leader. There's P2, Nick Yellowly, and P3 is Christopher Zochling. Then it's this battle for P4 between Christian Engelhardt and Mikhail Amamula. So Amamula looking at every opportunity he can to really uh, worry the uh, Christian Engelhardt uh, machine ahead. But Engelhardt, again, supremely experienced and knows that uh, he has uh, Amamula all over him. And Amamula just taking a look at the inside there. He'd, quite like to uh, provoke a small error from Christian Engelhardt. Might be able to have a go going into the chicane, perhaps. They're certainly close enough as they go through turn eight, the kink. And uh, here they are, absolutely uh, welded together almost. And uh, Engelhardt and Amamulla go through. Now, Amamulla not quite able to get on the inside of uh, Christian Engelhardt for the Coca-Cola turn, which he would love to do. That would give him the, the perfect run down the start finish straight and into turn one to complete a uh, move from uh, P5 to P4. But thus far, he has been denied by uh, Christian Engelhardt. So as they uh, make their way downhill once again, Amamula again looks to the inside, but there isn't a uh, gap wide enough for his Porsche to go into. And Therefore, Christian Engelhardt is able to uh, maintain his uh, P4 place at the moment. Of course, what that is allowing is Christopher Zochling and Nick Yellowly and Dennis Olsen to all escape up the road because Engelhardt is having to defend from uh, Mikhail Amamola. Yeah, it's, uh, this fight is, will be really interesting. I would say the two most uh, experienced drivers in Carrera Cup at the moment fighting for position. So they both know really well how to, how to attack and how to also close the close the gaps and deny the position. And as you were saying, this is allowing Christopher Solskjaer to open a little bit of a gap and, a gap and getting some uh, free air behind. Then he's also, he's also increasing his gap up to 1.7 seconds now. And Christopher Sochlin came a little, looks like coming a little bit closer to Nick Jelolin in the last two laps. So nothing is. Well, we're still we're not even at half distance in the race yeah, not yet. Even are half we? distance, so nothing is de decided yet. So <laughs> we're Olsen leading, and as Alex is saying, is extending his uh, margin as well. This is up to 1.9 seconds now. Ooh, a uh, lock up there from the. Uh, Number 83 car of uh, Tony Wolf, and uh, right behind him he has the uh, car of uh, Henrik Skoog, and also the car that you can see now uh, right behind him of uh, uh, the car of uh, the uh, Zile Racing Team of Al Faisal Al Zuber, and uh, Henrik Skoog trying to uh, buy into this uh, battle also best of the uh, B category drivers is uh, at the moment running in uh, P15, uh, Wolfgang Triller, Jean Schmidt Stada is P17, Stefan Rakoff, beg your pardon, because uh, Wolf Natan is uh, P16, so it's Wolfgang Triller, Wolf Natan and Jean Schmidt Stada, P15, 16 and 17 in the uh, B category at the moment. Olsen leading by uh, 1.9 seconds in the uh, race overall from uh, Nick Yellowly, who is P2, Christopher Zochling, who is P3. Then it's uh, Engelhart, Amamulla, Marius Nacken, Larry Tenvordo, Gabriella Piana, David Kochman, and uh, Thomas Prining is uh, P10, and uh, Ryan Cullen running in uh, P11. So there is the uh, Ryan Cullen car that uh, just mentioned, running in uh, P11, uh, Tony Wolf doing all he can to um, 
prevent that. Whoa, and that's some fairly hefty uh, defensive weaving there, and then a lock-up, which allows the uh, number 54 car of Alphys, allows Zubair to get ever closer. And as they uh, run into turn number one, I would think Tony Wolf is going to be very vulnerable. He tries to protect that inside line, gets ever closer. So uh, that means Alzube goes to the outside and will try perhaps to get the switch back and come underneath the number 83 car. Uh, but Tony Wolf knows exactly where to put the car to prevent that from uh, happening. This fight all going on for P12 in the uh, race. We have uh, 10 laps or uh, 14 and a half minutes of the race remaining, whichever should be the uh, first. And uh, first in the race at the moment is uh, Dennis Olsen, untroubled by anybody else. And uh, there goes the uh, Thomas Prining car, uh, getting past that uh, car of uh, David Kolkman. So uh, that's a uh, change further down the order for uh, P9. P9 now occupied by the number two car of Thomas Prining, having got past uh, David Kolkman. So David Kolkman in the number 16 machine is uh, relegated to uh, P10. So as they head up towards the NGK chicane now, heavy, heavy braking from Thomas Prining, but uh, through they go. And oh, cutting the chicane quite a lot, uh, Thomas Prining. So the gaps are pretty established now. Christian Engelhardt managed to open a few tens of gap compared to Mikkel Amemuller. Larry Tenfode getting a little bit closer to uh, Marius Nacken. But nothing. Uh, nothing to worry about at the moment for Marius Nacken. I have to say I'm being really impressed here, Alex, by Tony Wolf, who's really driving very, very defensively, but fairly. Yeah, it's, it's a good speed. He's keeping the speed, he's keeping the momentum high, so... And Zubair just cannot find a way past, yeah. can he? Uh, Christopher Zogling, who at one point we thought might be getting a little bit closer to Nick Yellily, uh, this uh, doesn't appear to be the case now. It's about uh, 1.5 seconds, the difference between the two of them. And this one you picked up is Larry Tenvorda getting ever closer to Marius Naken. Now, this is for uh, P6 in the race. Larry Tenvorda, the uh, Dutch racer, all over the uh, back of uh, Marius Nacken in the uh, number 14 car. And uh, as they go through the kink at turn six, which way will Larry Tenvorda go? He goes to the outside. A lock up oh, from Marius Nacken plays up. into the hands of Larry Tenvorda almost, but because uh, Nacken shortcutted the chicane, he was able to uh, maintain his position, wasn't he? And thus far, Alex, the times we've seen that short uh, that chicane being shortcutted, there's not one notification on our uh, message screen from race control. They're clearly allowing it, aren't they? Yeah, it looks like there is not a big, big opposition against this. It's, it's a bit strange to see because if you do a mistake like a lockup, uh, he was doing, and you get the position, and then he's so uh, shortcutting the chicane, and by this he's able to defend. Uh, it's not 100% fair, especially for the driver, which is overtaking, which well, is missing now. He's gained an advantage in being able to defend, hasn't exactly. he? Exactly. You, you not only win advantage by passing on other cars or uh, gaining time, it's also it's an advantage when you uh, shortcut the corner and that allows you to keep your position. Here's so Larry Tenvorda then, he's, he's continually pressuring uh, Marius Nacken and at the moment Marius Nacken has uh, not yielded to that pressure. He's been quite saved at that chicane, but uh, Larry Tenvorder is maintaining the uh, force on him and uh, Marius Nacken having to drive very, very defensively indeed to uh, prevent Larry Tenvorder from uh, taking away his uh, P6 position at the moment. Here comes Tenvorder again. Let's see what we get at the NGK chicane this time around as they're heading towards it now. Uh, Dennis Olsen leading and extending his lead to 2.2 seconds over. Uh, the uh, P2 driver, Nick Yellily and uh, oh, Christopher Zochling. And once again, through the chicane, Marius Nacken choosing a different route to everybody else. And this will probably make Larry Tenforte more and more angry. So you have now yellow flag. Turn seven. seven. Turn seven, sector two. Nice green again, so maybe some. Oh, and we see now mistake from Marius Nacken. So that allows uh, Larry Tenfoda to get through, to get past him. So the pressure paid off in the end, didn't it? 
yeah, the, the pressure paid off, and uh, almost two laps after Larry, Larry Tenfore managed to pass the Marius Naken. The breaking zone into corner number one. Then we see the repetition again. I break maybe a little bit too much on the curb from Marius Naken, and it's still maybe a little bit dumb, so his brake performance was not as great as. Uh, right. He went a little bit too wide on the entry and. Uh, end up losing the position to, to Larry Tenforo. And we see now our race leader, Dennis Olsen, going into this flat out king. He's got nothing really to worry about, has he? Because um, he's got no traffic ahead of him. He's got a 2.1 second margin over Nick Yellily. And uh, the one, two, three really are spaced out quite evenly, aren't they? And they're uh, fairly untroubled, aren't they? Mikhail Amamuller, though, I'm perhaps surprised. Well, maybe I'm not surprised because you made the point earlier. Probably the two most experienced drivers in the Carrera Cup are together here, aren't they, in uh, P4 and P5. Therefore, presumably, Engelhardt's not likely to make a mistake. Amamuller needs Engelhardt to make a mistake so that he can, uh, you know, he hasn't got sufficient pace to be able to overtake without just a little bit of extra, has he? Yeah, exactly. Has to be really well prepared, really close. So Mikel Müller can have the chance to get past uh, Christian Ellenhardt, even in this case, for sure, Christian Ellenhardt will uh, close the door as much as he can and deny the position to Mikel Müller. There's Yellowly, just goes through P2, there's Zochling, and then it is this battle for P4 uh, between Christian Engelhardt and uh, Mikel Müller. Six laps remaining, or eight and uh, eight minutes and uh, 20 seconds or so. Olsen leading by 1.9 seconds from that man, Nick Yellowly. Then it is uh, uh, Christopher Zogling. Then it's uh, Engelhart Ammermuller. And Larry Tempolder, of course, now is uh, P6 with Marius Nack and relegated to P7. Gabriella Piana is P8. Thomas Prining, P9. There he is. Flashing to Marius Nacken now. Just losing a little bit of performance now in this second part of the race. Was really good at the start. Yeah. This also allowed, this allowed Gabriele Piana to get close to the... See, Mario Snacken again cutting that chicane incredibly. Am I trying to wind my uh, thoughts back to um, yesterday? Did someone not get penalized in that chicane as we see Carlos Rivera down the pit lane? Uh, yes, for us, you know, I mean, uh, Larry Tenforte got past the uh, Christopher uh, socially by cutting the chicane, so... Uh, and then he got a five-second penalty for right. gaining an advantage at the end right. of the race after the checkered flag. So, yesterday they were a little bit more severe on on this. When we see Carlos Rivera having probably some technical defect coming to the box. Also with a problem Richie, is Richie Muller. Richie Muller, ah, but probably he's getting lapped. That's right, so he's just... Getting lap, we see, oh, Mikel Amamuller really close into Christopher, uh, Christian Engelhardt. Let's see if Richie Muller is not playing a role in this fight. Because you always need to take care about the traffic. So car 14, black and white flag, leaving the track, including an advantage. So that's the car of Marius Nacken. They're listening to you. They're, 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 they have our, they tune us on. <laughs> right, there's Wolf Natan who is uh, running in uh, P16 behind the uh, car of uh, Wolfgang Twiller. So the Huber racing by uh, Trispar car. Uh, Wolf Natan then. Four laps left. Yellowly is just uh, it's beginning to lap quicker than uh, Dennis Olsen, but it's all coming, I suspect, really rather too late in the race. And Wolf Natan making his way down the back straight through that uh, kink and heading up towards the uh, chicane now. What we see now, Chris Mikkel Muller diving a little bit into the inside of uh, Christian Engelhar. So they are closer now than ever. Left, left, right, left, right. Amamula is clearly quicker, isn't he? But he just cannot find a way past Christian Engelhardt. Yeah, Christian Engelhardt making his... He's sticking his elbow. Yeah, now, exactly. He? He's sticking his elbow, making his car as wide as possible. A little bit of locking now from Christian Engelhardt. Nothing really important, but... 
that allows Mikel and Müller to get closer and closer. Every single mister left right there. Both, like you said, is making his car as wide as he can and sticking his elbows out. Let's see how now into the chicane. It's. It must be jolly hard as a racing driver to do this lap after lap after lap to constantly having to defend so hard. Well, Amma Muller. Outside line for Amma Muller. Let's see if he gets a better exit. Oh. Well, chicane, I don't think so. No. It was good. Good defend by Christian Engelhar. Now into Kokora Kola. And oh, and the inside goes and around goes Christian Engelhar. Well. We need to see the replay from that. How quickly can Engelhardt get that car turned around? Oh, without losing too many places. Well, he's lost a handful of them, hasn't he? Well, we'd see that from a different angle, but uh, Amamula clearly, I mean, he must have been getting frustrated. Let's see, he goes. Where well, he's alongside, isn't he? He's alongside. He's pretty much in the, in, the, in the inside of the corner. So it's front, front left was already ahead of the rear rear right of uh, Christian Engelhar. So I might say that Christian Engelhar maybe left the door a little bit open. And for sure, uh, like you were saying, this by this uh, experience, guys, if you leave two centimeters the door open, they will straight go for it. Two centimeters suddenly becomes 30 centimeters. Yeah, but uh, you know, Spanish and from Cordoba, <laughs> we exaggerate a lot. <laughs> You're right. Um, I have to say, I think Amamula uh, was okay there. I think I think there was a gap, and I think Christian turned in on him. We have anyway the accident under investigation right well, now. Inevitably, inevitably. But what it does mean is that Amamula at the moment is a P4, is some distance down on uh, Christopher Zochling. It has to be said, and too far down, I would suggest to trouble uh, Christopher Zochling in the remaining three minutes of this race or three laps. So Larry Tenvorder then, who uh, finds himself in P5 now. And uh, behind him is Thomas Prining and Marius Nacken is a cork in a bottle ahead of Gabriella Piana and uh, David Kolkman, isn't he? So Marius Nacken is uh, currently running uh, P7. Can he hold on for another couple of laps to uh, maintain that uh, P7 position? I'm not convinced, if I'm honest with you, with uh, both Kolkman and Gabriella Piana there as they run down into uh, turn number one now. Runs very wide, but not wide enough for the advantage of uh, Gabriella Piana to be uh, taken. David Colkman is probably just sitting back there, going to allow these two to fight and do all the work for him. Oh, a little bit lock up from Marius Nacken. This might allow Gabriella to get past him a little bit better. Exit probably out of corner for not there yet. And of course, David Colkman. The incident, incidentally, between cars number five and car number 87, no further action. action. I think that's, that's fair. That's fair. I think it's pretty fair. There was a win there was a gap open, and and definitely uh, Christian Engelhardt went. Uh, excuse me, Michael and Muller went for it, and inevitably turned uh, Christian Engelhardt a little bit around. Christian Engelhardt, of course, may see it slightly differently, but there we are. That's the. Uh, Decision from race control, no further action. And uh, for my money, I think that's the right call. So Marius Nacken looks like now it's taking the proper line through the chicane. <laughs> yeah, Gabriele Piana now diving the inside for Coca-Cola corner. Yes, that's the right line. Will David Cockman take advantage of it? Yes, he does. Yes, he does, because he's right alongside Marius Nacken. He's got the inside line going into turn one. So. David Colkman is going to be able to take advantage of this as well. The error from uh, Marius Nacken. We're on the final lap now. So sure enough, Colkman does go through. So Marius Nacken, the first time we've seen him actually use the, uh, the chicane the right way, loses two places as a consequence yeah, exactly. almost. Yeah, but I was talking to, to Dennis Olsen. He said by cutting the chicane, you can gain up to six tenths. So this Never. Is this is said, I have the difference of six tenths one lap to the other, or by, only by cutting the chicane or going close. Because, yeah, you, have, you can do it quite a straight line. Yes, but... I mean, from, yeah. a racing po from a racing driver point of view, and he was saying, I would prefer to drive the fast chicane, yeah. then there will be no problems. Yeah. But anyway, he will be happy anyway, because he's leading the race with 1.9 seconds, and he's into the last lap, uh, going out through sector two. So he should might he should take it home Whoa. without many. Oh, that was a big, big sideways, sideways moment, Richie Muller. So there we there we see is 
Dennis Olsen coming for the last time through this Coca-Cola turn into the finish line. Checker flag for the Norwegian driver takes another win at Carrera Cup, followed by Nick Yellowly and closing the podium, Christopher Sochlin. So following Christopher Sochling, it will be Mikhail Amamula, safe in the knowledge that that P4 will be maintained, no further action. Then it's be Larry Tenborda that will take uh, P5 ahead of uh, uh, Thomas Prining. And uh, then it will be Gabriella Piana, David Kolkman, Marius Nacken, who just gets passed by uh, Christian Engelhardt for uh, P9. Of course, Christian Engelhardt returning from the contact with Mikhail Amamola. Then it's Marius Nacken and Ryan Cullen, El Zubair. Then it's uh, Tony Wolf and Henrik Skoog. And Wolfgang Triller will be the fastest of the uh, B category drivers. Here comes uh, Wolfgang Triller now. Uh, he too, like Dennis Olsen, taking another win in the Carrera Cup, but a win in the P category. Here comes a Wolf Natan to take P2, and it's Jorn Schmidt Stader uh, that will take P3 in the uh, B podium. So, there we have it, the uh, longer race for the uh, Carrera Cup Deutschland cars on track, and a uh, good job by all. And uh, there is Marius Nacken getting the right line. Oh, that's a... Uh... That, was, that was a real moment. And I mean, no, is it? Ooh. Ooh. that gave Christian Engelhardt the opportunity, didn't it, to at least make up one place. Um, Marius Nacken has been quite interesting running through those, uh, uh, through that chicane in the way that he's done it. So Olsen is the uh, winner for Conrad Motorsport then, and uh, cements his position in the uh, championship. A good P2 from Nick Yellowly and a good P3 as well. And, I think it's a deserved podium for Christopher Zochling, having done pole position in both races. Uh, we are going to see him up on the uh, podium. Here's the result in full for you then. It's Dennis Olsen, P1. Then it's Nick Yellerly, Christopher Zochling, Mikhail Amamula, Larry Tenvorder, Thomas Prining, uh, Gabriella Piano, David Kolkman, Christian Engelhardt, and Marius Nacken rounding out the top 10. Ahead of Ryan Cullen, Al Faisal, Al Zubair, uh, Tony Wolf, Henrik Skoog, Wolfgang Triller, Wolf Natan, Jorn Schmidt, Stada, Ewan Taylor, Stefan Raykopf, Peter Schufen then takes uh, P20. Uh, then it's Pierre-Yves Park and uh, Richie Muller, Carlos Rivas, Philip Saga and Zayed Ashkanani. Of course, along with uh, Philip Saga, we uh, lost in the race. So here is uh, Dennis Olsen then uh, taking that uh, victory. Jacket flag falling for uh, Dennis Olsen. Franz Conrad, pretty pleased with that. They have the three cars. Olsen parked up in the uh, Park Ferme. Star in the making here, isn't it, Dennis Olsen? Yeah, it's uh, getting, like you were saying, it, this car is it's not so easy to drive, so you need, you need some time to get it up to speed. And it's like every time getting faster and faster, more and more confident with this uh, Porsche 911 GT3 Cup. So, Franz Conrad. You very rarely see Franz Conrad without a smile on his face. Yeah. I don't know whether I told you, I stayed in a hotel um, uh, at Spa a few years ago, which is full of memorabilia, of racing memorabilia. And uh, there was a fantastic book in there with a fantastic photograph of um, of Franz Conrad in his racing days. It must be goodness knows how many years ago. Doesn't look any different then to what he looks now. Extraordinary. Uh, so there is uh, Dennis Olsen then. Another P1 to put into the book. And that means the Drivers' Championship is still his on 206 points. Nick Yellerly on 175. Christopher Zochling P3. Then it's Amamula, Tenborda, Engelhart, Prining. Uh, Piana, uh, Kolkman, and uh, Ryan Cullen. And Chris, Chris of the championship farm for Dennis Olsen. So every time it's looking better and better. But anyway, next chapter will be written next week in Saxon Ring. Yes, the drivers, the teams, they don't have much rest time, do they? Because uh, it is off to Saxon Ring. Here come the top three before the podium then. And P3 goes the way of uh, Christopher Zochling. Yeah, then 
like we saw that star from from Christopher Sochlin was not as uh, as good as uh, we expected, and then we see now Nick Jelly who do a really good start today, slow mo over this chicane, second position for the British driver, Team Project One, and finally the slow mo of our race winner Dennis Olsen. Really good performance from the Porsche Junior driver driving the car of Konrad Motorsport. We see Hans Camps, Project One. Must be happy anyway. Good podium for them, good points. And I think even more happier is this man, Franz Conrad. So drivers waiting to go to make their way into the podium. So small talk about the race. Exchange of feelings and experience. Getting some refreshment. So we can see from our commentary boot, podium is ready. Boot got Wächter, our German colleague commentator in charge of commentating Carrera Cup, calling the drivers onto the podium. There we see Dennis Olsen, winner of the race, making into the stop step. Position two, Nick Yellowly, closing the podium. Christopher Sochlin, we hear national alpha. So that was Norwegian national answer for Dennis Olsen, our race winner. When we go now into the trophy presentation. Look at Zogli. On that podium, he yeah. just, <laughs> he's just high. He is seven <laughs> foot tall. So Dennis Olsen getting his gold trophy. Winning the race. Nick Jelloli does so. Applause from Project One. And last but not least, third position for Christopher Sochlin. So drivers into the group picture. And straight away will be the champagne shower. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I think Zoschling is really deserving of that uh, podium place because uh, he put the... <laughs> I don't know whether he's quite as deserving as the, as the shower he's getting from uh, Dennis Olsen there, but he put the car pole position on both races, didn't he? He did a great job in qualifying. And <laughs> he's uh, only now is he able to get any... He can't see a thing, look. Yeah, it's, it's just, this, this I know it happened often. When it goes into your eyes, you can't forget the... You can't forget, forget about seeing something. <laughs> it's, itching, it's itching as hell. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's the answer. Take a good old slug of it. Uh, well done to Dennis Olsen, Nick Yellowly, and uh, Christopher Zochling then. Who uh, take the um, one, two, three, of course, in the A category, which is for pro and semi pro drivers. We have a uh, um, podium for the uh, B category to come as well. Another picture. Big applause. So they make their way off of the podium. Just on occasions, someone will appear on the podium with a mop to clear up the mess that's been made ahead of the uh, next podium. Uh, big thumbs up there from uh, 
the leader of the uh, Project One team. Just see Franz Conrad in the uh, background there. Hans Bern Camps, leader of the uh, Project One team, and uh, Franz Conrad, of course, uh, leader of the uh, Conrad Motorsport team, the other Project One boss there as well. That's uh, Jörg. Jörg is there, wearing an interesting cap. I did mention this to him yesterday. <laughs> Here comes Wolfgang Triller, complete with sunglasses, never any different. Wolf in the tan. I was talking to Wolf Nathan this morning at the Porsche Hospital AT. So yeah, we started, yeah, yesterday we have the cool line and blah, blah, and it was not so bad coming. Came into P2 and said, yeah, push to the front, we'll make it to the podium. And it's made so, so I'm happy for him. National Anthem. So it is the B podium then, and uh, the national anthem plays out for uh, Wolfgang Triller. And here comes the uh, trophy presentations. So Wolf Natan's P2 is what you're telling me is just down to your driver coaching with him. Yeah, it was a 10 second thing. I say, you have to push. <laughs> Any advice? I tell him, push. You need to push. And he did so, and he came P2. So yeah, he, must, he, he will be really happy about it. Yeah, he's a nice guy. I like um, I like Wolf yeah. no end. Oh, nice, nice uh, Wolfgang's a nice uh, guy, and so is Jorn Schumann who receives his trophy as well now. Um, I didn't realize until Wolfgang uh, Triller removed the baseball caps how short of hair he was, I have to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> don't did look at my <laughs> don't look at my head like that, Alex. I was just thinking, did you, did you look at yours? Or, uh, <laughs> yeah, kettle calling the pot black. I think. I, I, can, I can say that, that everyone was meeting on the pedestal. <laughs> did you, you should go to the hairdresser because my hair is so long. So highlights of the race now. Let's have the highlights. Next Porsche Carrera Cup racing comes at the Saxon Ring in a week's time from Alex and me. Thank you. Bye bye.